Does this, does this thing even fit in the frame? Oh yeah, we're golden. Some people would say that the most feared weapon on the battlefield is a trained soldier with a long gun. I would personally disagree with that statement. I'd probably say that the most feared weapon on the battlefield is actually a tactical nuke. Uh, a weapon so powerful literally drove man to create hentai and tentacle porn. But I digress. That's not what we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you want to talk about tentacle porn and uh, hentai, this ain't the place to be because today we're gonna to be talking about the Barrett Mark 22 Mod Zero. You guys have seen this rifle in a couple of my other videos that I've made, um, but a lot's changed in the last couple months. I got a new suppressor, I got the uh, new, a new barrel with a new caliber, and there was some upper receiver issues. So we're all gonna, we're gonna address all of that in the video, so stay for the whole thing. Really appreciate it again for you guys joining in. If you could just hit that like button, and really, really appreciate it. You guys have no idea how much work I put into these videos, even though they do suck, but, if you can just hit that like button, I'd really, really appreciate it. And also, if you guys hear some pitter pattering around and like rolling and huffing and puffing, it's not me. Uh, it's not me getting excited. I don't know where my dog, my dog is. She's making her first, uh, her first appearance on the channel. So maybe she'll be like in frame walking around. But I digress. Thank you guys again for watching, and let's just drive, dive right on into it. Yeah. Before we get into the likes and gripes about the Barrett Mark 22, just a little history lesson about this thing. So this is the military's new sniper system. It replaced the Army's XM-2010, and then it replaced the Marine Corps' M-40. Um, this was derived off of the Barrett MRAD, which was a multi-role adaptive device. So that means that it's a, it's a, um, it's a easy, barrel swap i guess <laughs> you can swap the barrel and about all it takes is about two screws and then um, you have a whole new caliber throw the barrel on there it takes about a minute to do uh, i saw a guy he did it in like 30 seconds which was pretty awesome but it took me about a minute uh, so that's where this rifle came from and i really do honestly believe that it will go down into the military's one of the military's greatest purchases tactical tactical nuke being number one ch-47 chinook will probably be number two and then the mark 22 by barrett will be number three really really great rifle and i think that they did an amazing job selecting this rifle as the uh, military's new sniper system I don't think that there is one out there that is better than the Barrett um, MRAD and the Mark 22. So A plus, Chef's Kiss. Uh, really glad that they went with the 300 Norma Mag. Uh, I just think that it's you love you know I love my 300 Win Mag, but uh, 300 Norma Mag. I just think it gives you a lot more uh, range and a lot more power down range to send the enemy straight to eternity. So really happy with the whole package that the Barrett Mark 22 comes with, and enough talking. Let's just get right on into it. I can't carry that thing anymore. It's so heavy because I'm a little pussy. But you know how we do things here. We go from nut to butt with our rifles. Starting out with the suppressor. This is the AML338 by Barrett Firearms. Super cool suppressor. This is the standard issue one that goes with the Mark 22. Um, it's made of titanium al alloy. Uh, public, public school English, so bear with me. It's uh, roughly 25 ounces. Overall length is 10 inches, 10 and a quarter inches, uh, and it adds on roughly seven and a half inches to the barrel length, which it's, it's, it's a long boy. As you can see, the thing barely fit into this, uh, into, into the frame here, but super, super cool suppressor. Very, very happy with it. It does a phenomenal job at every single thing that a suppressor should do. Flash signature reduction. Very, very quiet. I think it's below 100. It brings the decibel level below, I think, 140 decibels. So it is a fairly quiet suppressor, especially because it's shooting that large, large magnum caliber uh, bullet. I'm not carrying that thing anymore, so I'm just gonna be sitting in the position that God intended me to sit in. Ah. Sit, Kona. Come here. Sit. Sit. Not in the camera. I don't want to carry this thing anymore. My back hurts, my shoulders hurt, and I'm a little pussy. So that's one gripe that I do have about this rifle is, is it is extremely heavy. But uh, would I want to ruck around with this thing, uh, climb in the mountains of Afghanistan with this thing? Absolutely not. It would not be very fun. It's extremely heavy. But um, other than that, let's go back into the barrel. Right now, I have the 26-inch uh, 300 uh, PRC on the on the MRAD. I was shooting the 300 Norma Mag, but 
uh, it's just too damn expensive. I think you're looking at like 100 and 120 rounds for 20 bucks or something like that. It's just, you just I, I can't afford that. I mean, maybe if you guys like my videos more, maybe we'll see what happens. But so I went to the 300 PRC and uh, super happy with the performance of the 300 PRC. It's more or less like a 300 Win Mag on uh, steroids and it's fairly cheap to shoot. So that's why I chose that. Um, very happy with the performance, extremely accurate. Uh, and I, I have no gripes on the 300 PRC or the, or the performance of the Barrett barrel, the accuracy wise. I think this is a one in eight twist. I'm not really sure what the 300, I got to double check what the 300 Norma is and the 308 and then the 338 Norma barrels. But this one I'm pretty sure is a one in, no, one in seven, excuse me. So very accurate barrel. It was uh, pretty much one on top of the other. Um, when I when I zeroed it in at a hundred yards, so very happy. The one thing that I, I I don't really know why they went with the 26 inch barrel. I know obviously the longer the barrel, the better velocity, the farther range. I get that, but damn, damn, dude, I'm about six feet and this thing is up to roughly my chin. Uh, it's a very 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 long gun. I mean obviously, but uh, it is a long gun, but. Uh, I, 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 it would be kind of hard to conceal this thing, to be honest. Uh, if I was out in a hide somewhere or anything like that, uh, it is, it is, it is very, 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 very long and very, very big rifle. But um, not really sure why they didn't go with the 24 inch barrel. Maybe somebody knows. If you want to leave it in the comment section, why they went with the 26 and not the 24 inch barrel, I don't know. Let me know. But um, so yeah, that's on the barrel. A plus on the barrel. Really, 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 really good. Fluted, uh, fluted heavy barrel. That flute doesn't really do much. Doesn't really like everybody's like, bro, you need the fluted barrel. Blah, blah, blah. It dissipates heat more, so the barrel cools down a little better, and you can uh, and you don't really smoke it as much. I guess that's what I was always told. But um, I mean, these barrels, especially when you're shooting those Magnum rounds, you're only getting probably about 3,000 rounds out of it maybe uh, depending on how hot you're getting your barrel so um, i think that barrett does a really really good job at making their barrels and stuff like that and uh, very very happy with the 300 prc and the 300 norma mag barrels that i've that i've put all these rounds through uh, on the uh, mark 22. so this thing comes with a harris bipod i'm really happy with the harris uh, I've used Atlas a lot. Um, I've had a lot of Atlas bipods. They're very expensive, but um, to tell you the truth, sometimes they can just get kind of overwhelming. The Harris, the, the, excuse me, the Atlas bipods. That's why I like the Harris's. You know, they swivel. That's really about it. Super smooth. It doesn't, you know, do all this crazy shit like the Atlas does, and they're fairly cost effective. So I'm always, I'm always a Harris guy. I've always been a Harris guy, but. Um, I've seen a lot of people swapping the bipods out, so I don't know. I have no no gripes on the Harris bipod. I don't know. Maybe one day I will put an Atlas on it. I, I don't know, but I have right now, I'm happy with the Harris, and I'll probably keep the Harris on it for a while. So um, if anybody else has any other recommendations for bipods, let me know, because I've only used Harris and Atlas. Those are the only two brands that I've ever used. So going into the upper receiver, this thing is super easy. It's literally two pieces. It's an upper receiver, lower receiver. You know, there's there's nothing that you can like take off and like five different pieces to your rifle. Um, it has normal breakdown pins, just like an M4. It's really bare bones basic. That's why I love bolt actions because there's really nothing to it. It's a bolt and a trigger and a barrel. That's pretty much it. But I like how they went with the M lock. I think a lot of companies are going to that M-Lock style uh, upper receivers and stuff. I think they just feel better. They're uh, lighter, and I just think that they're that that's the where the future is going is the um, uh, M-Lock style um, upper receivers and stuff. I do like quad rails, but I'm glad they went with the M-Lock. Um, this is where it starts getting weird. So the two bolts right there that hold the barrel in. <laughs> um, well. The military was having a lot of issues. This is number 59 uh, ever made of the Mark 22. So the military was having big issues where their whole upper receiver was cracking. Because it is one, one piece, you can't just replace the rail or something like that. 
we had to replace the whole upper receiver. So the whole upper receiver was, was cracking. And I was like, that sucks, sucks to suck. And uh, so I changed the barrel out and I noticed that mine had a crack in it. And I was like, whoa. And then it got bigger. And then I was like, well, that thing's toast. So this is why I really, really like Barrett. I sent Barrett photos, Barrett photos of it and they were like, yep, no issue, send it in. So I sent in my rifle, they fixed it scot-free didn't cost anything out of my pocket and then it was back into back on my front doorstep in about a week i didn't even get I, they didn't even give me tracking i just what i went in one day i didn't even have to sign for the freaking thing i just showed up and there it was my my <laughs> my barrett mark 22 uh sitting there on my front doorstep so that was an issue I talked to Barrett and they said that that was a known issue with the Mark 22s. Um, the vendor, I guess, where they got their metal from for the upper receivers, I don't know. It was just weird metal. So they swapped out new upper receiver or they swapped out vendors to build their upper receivers. And I guess there isn't any, um, any, any issues anymore with them. How you can tell an, an old upper receiver that was cracking to a new upper receiver is the little tiny dot right here. Um, if you see this little indent and this little tiny dot, that shows that it is a new upper receiver. I don't know if that had anything to do with it not cracking or something. Um, not really sure. But even when you were following torques, the torque spec that it required, they were still cracking. So it was obviously a malfunction um, from the factory. But I really, really like Barrett. They were like, totally on us. Sucks. We will replace everything. I know that they were replacing all of the military's upper receivers. So kudos to them. Barrett was always very friendly with me. Uh, I broke my, my M82A1, shipped it out to them. They shipped me a brand spanking new one that was completely fixed. So can't talk bad about Barrett. I love them. I think that they're the best um, firearms manufacturer out there and they are by far my favorite. Customer service is great, always friendly, always super cool and always super quick and they will, they'll, they'll, they'll fix anything um, that, that you need. So A plus to Barrett on fixing that malfunction. And I'm really, really happy with, uh, with the way things are going with it. So my scope of choice right now is the Night Force Attacker. Uh, this is the 35 power. I mean, I had a couple scopes on it. I had a vortex on it. I had a couple vortexes on it, but chose the uh, attacker. I think the attacker is a pretty good scope. Really happy with it so far. And I really just think it complements the whole package. So I think they're using what the Leupold Mark V, I think is what the military is using. But I like my attacker. Uh, I always talk crap about Night Force. I think they're just kind of overpriced for what you're getting. But I got mine on here. Pretty happy with it so far. And uh, maybe we'll go to a Leupold. I don't know. We're, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But right now, I've got the attacker and the Geisley mount, and uh, very, very happy with it. So, <clears throat> so going to the trigger. The trigger is smooth, man. So we're just gonna ghost it really quickly and hear that break. I think it's like two pounds or something like that. I don't even think it's that. Ooh. Super, super smooth, smooth trigger. It's not a two stage, it's a single stage trigger, um, which I kind of like better to be honest on this rifle. Ooh, super smooth, super smooth trigger. Very happy with it. Um, what The one thing that I've noticed about this trigger is it literally startles you, which a good trigger should, you know? You shouldn't be pulling that thing. Um, you shouldn't be knowing when it's going to break. I mean, have an idea, obviously, but every time I shoot this, it definitely does. It, it, it's very, very, very soft. So very, very happy with the trigger. Um, a plus on that and I uh, can't, can't complain. But going into the lower receiver, the one thing that I do wish that this, ha I wish it had, I wish it had Ambi the safety switch. I wish the safety switch was Ambi. I know you can swap everything. You can swap it to go over on the right side if you're a lefty or whatever. I'm a righty, so it's on the left. But I wish that the um, selector switch was ambidextrous. But I mean, that's kind of getting into some small, small gripes. Uh, but that's one thing that I notice. Sometimes I like get off the gun and I try like reaching it on, on here and I'm like, damn it. So, um, I mean, these are just small gripes, but I do wish that the, uh, the safety switch was ambidextrous, but it is what it is. Back into the stock, the stock is super chill. So going into the stock, I'm very happy with the stock. 
as you guys know what I'm gonna say, it has the adjustable cheek rise right here. Uh, very easy to use, just a little pin out here and you pull it and then it will adjust. I'm not gonna do it right now because I have it set at a good height and I don't wanna mess it up for this video. Um, but going back in here, you got a good length of pull too. Uh, it can go up and down, which I like that. So the the, the uh, pad, you can put it wherever you want. And I've noticed I'm, I'm bringing mine up here a little higher, just how I kind of shoot the gun, how I get on the gun. I've noticed that um, it's kind of lower into my shoulder and, I, and I, it feels more comfortable when it's up higher. Uh, also, you have, the length of, you have the length of pole right here, which you can, you can change it, which is awesome. Go way, way out there, or you can go way, way in up to you so the the um, the stock is definitely has a lot of different options for the shooter which is which is awesome so a plus on the stock I'm very very happy with it I might put a pad right here um, I, what, one thing that I did notice is your cheek does get kind of raw <laughs> when you keep shooting this thing it is a very very powerful rifle so there is a lot of recoil and I might try putting a pad or something right here to just be a little more comfortable. You can stay on the gun a little longer. But other than that, very, very happy with it. Uh, the very, I like how it adjusts too, which is awesome. So it just, I'm sorry, folds, which is awesome to make it more compact. If you have to, you know, throw it in a backpack or something like that, uh, A plus on the stock, really. Very, very happy with it. And uh, I like how it also has QD mounts built into the stock uh, uh, on this position and this position, left and right. So you have a lot of, a lot of different uh, customize, customizable options for this rifle, which is, which is awesome. You can totally tell that it was made for the military and uh, I see why they, they chose this rifle. So yeah, that's that, that's the stock. That's so uh, what else are we gonna talk about? Uh, oh. So going into the action, the action is super smooth. It's in this like polymer sleeve housing thing. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really know what the point of the polymer sleeve is, but it, it is a very, very smooth action. Haven't had any binds up, bind ups or anything like that. So very happy with the smoothness of the action and how it operates, which is really, really awesome. The charging handle too is pretty good because it's a, um, or the bolt handle, when I say charging handle, you know what I mean, whatever, don't judge me. I've seen what makes you laugh. So it's a very, very uh, nice handle here. It's at a perfect angle. It's this big knob, so you have tons of real estate and you have a lot of stuff to grab onto. Unlike that like XM2010, the Remington 700 one, which was kind of small. You sometimes had to like fish for it if you weren't like looking at it and stuff, but you know exactly where it's at. You can definitely tell that it is uh, where your hand is supposed to be and A+. So that's kind of the stuff about the Mark 22. Um, the things that we talked about, the suppressor, the barrel, and the uh, issue with the upper receiver that was fixed by Barrett. So very, very happy with the Mark 22. I think it's an amazing rifle, and I think that it will go down in... Uh, I think it will go down in history as one of uh, the military's greatest purchases, to be honest. Uh, I think it really, really changed the way that sniper rifles should be. And this, it, I think it truly did change the standard of a long range sniper rifle, to be honest. So very happy with it. A plus chef's kiss. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't want to ramble on anymore. Look, I'm already covered in ticks. I have a deer tick right on my hand. I've had Lyme disease more times than I can tell. I guess you can only have it once and then you have it forever, but I've had more bullseyes on me than I'd like to admit. So whatever, if I die, just hit that like button. It really helps me out. I'm literally out here getting eaten by deer ticks. Hit that like button for me, damn it. But thank you guys again for watching. Hope that you uh, like, like me rambling about the Mark 22 and I'll see you guys back out there later.